Line V1, we're taking a look at learning task number eight, and we're going to be taking a look at the old yogging circuits. I believe it's a soft J over there. Anyways, uh, taking a look at these things, we have got a couple of circuits that we're going to go through. They do start out by just showing us this one over here and saying that this is not going to be the way that we are going to jog a motor. Now, some of you are probably wondering what exactly is jogging of a motor. Jogging of a motor is just where we are going to go and have uh, the motor itself that we can activate only when we press down on a push button. As long as I press that push and push button down, the motor will run. Once I take my finger off, you know, the motor is going to shut down. We use it for things like positioning. You got to, you know, inch something a little bit closer so that it's in position or things like that. That would be where we would use jogging just so we can get little bursts without the thing sealing in. Uh, it's a way faster way for the operator to be able to go and activate. You know, they can press it, they take the finger off, they don't have to scramble and look for the stop button or anything like that. This circuit over here does show a jogging push button that's inside of it. It is not going to be the one that you should be using in a lot of places because we have what's referred to as contact race that can go and happen on this. And contact race is simply just going to be the difference in time between this section here activating, this one changing, and this one reversing all the way back through. Let me go through what exactly they mean. If we take a look, we, we can easy track down all of our at rest power through here, right? We see that line two is going to come up to the coil there. We see that line one is going to stop over there at the normally open push button. It's going to stop at the ceiling contact. It's going to stop at the bottom side of this, which is going to be a two pole push button over here, right? It's a two pole push button that's got one normally closed and one normally open on it. Let's go into a normal operational mode just to, you know, prove how this thing works as a regular one. That would be me pressing this down over there. When that happens, we can then flow current all the way up to the coil. The coil would then energize, which would then seal this in over here, which would allow current to flow through here and up to that coil as well. We could take a finger off the push button at that point, and we would see that we are sealed in and operational. Motor is going to be running. We can interrupt that current at any point by pressing the stop push button over there, which would take out all the rest of these currents, takes the coil out, which takes out that contact over there. Let's bring this thing back to an at rest position over here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go and activate the jog push button. When I activate the jog push button, what should happen is this one should, I'm just going to go and stick a little asterisk next to that thing, should be a brake before make. That's what we should have out of its operation. In other words, this circuit over here should break or open up before this circuit over here makes or closes in. So let's say that it's operating correctly. That would mean that we push this thing down, we close this circuit over here, which would mean that I would have power through up to there. This coil would go and energize. And this sealing contact over here would go and close as well because it's directly tied to the coil, but it would only be able to bring power up to that point over there. I forgot to draw the rest of the power line going through there like that. So what we have is we have a circuit that would then be operating for as long as I push down on that button. Once I release that button, if it's operating correctly, it should then do the same action, break before me, on the way back up again, which would mean that it would be starting out down here, that it's going to go and break this contact, which would de-energize that coil, which would then go and drop that out, which would then you know, prevent us from having power through there before this one makes it all the way back up to the top over here. That would be optimal operation. Where this setup with the double push button breaks down is when you got a really good push button over here and you get somebody that taps it and just like bam, 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 bam. And what happens is this thing bounces in and bounces back out too rapidly and this has not had a chance yet to clear. This coil operates slower than that. It's just a bigger mechanical component in a lot of cases. So if I were to press this one down, so this one opens, that one closes, and provide power through here, energize that coil, that coil closes over here, provides power through to here. If, when I release my finger, I take my finger off that push button really, really quickly, what can happen in essence is that this is going to break here. Yeah, it drops power to the coil, but this is slow 
to react. Okay, it's, it's just like slowly kind of coming over. I mean, it's, we're talking milliseconds here, but compared to electricity at the speed of light, that's pretty slow. And this moves back into that position over there. And guess what? The electricity, boom, hits that coil again and keeps this thing sealed in. So it's what we refer to as a dangerous jog, just due to the fact that, you know, that motor could continue to run even after we take our finger off that jog button, particularly when we're positioning stuff, you know, this could be a dangerous thing. We get overruns and, you know, mechanical issues, hopefully not people getting crushed, but hopefully just machines and things like that. So we just should not be using it. That's why we don't want to use this one over here. What we have instead is we've got a couple of them in here that are going to go and use either selector switches, which is a really common way to go and do it, or the push button control. To be honest, the preferred method is probably the selector switch because then we still have only one push button for the motor that is going to go and you know run this thing. If I take a look, I've got a two position selector switch. When it's in jog mode over here, I see that it's breaking that bar over there. So right now in jog mode, anytime that I press my start push button, that's my power up into there, my power up into there. If I press the start push button, this is going to go and close. Power is going to transfer over to the coil. The coil is going to go and energize. It will close in this set of contacts, but there's no power getting through to them. So I'm only gonna run power to this coil for as long as I've got that push button over there held down. Since I release that push button, it's gonna drop out the coil and drop out that contact as well. When I put it into run, I basically just make this circuit good again. You'll note that this, what we have over here, is basically the exact same as any other three wire start stop, right? We see that auxiliary contact just in parallel with my start push button. Let's follow it through here in the run position. In the run position, I've now got a normally closed, which means I've got power all the way up to there. This one is going to go and bring power up to the other side of the coil over there. And then at this point, we can press our start. So we press the start over here. Because we press the start, power now makes it all the way through to the coil. The coil is going to go and energize. And because the coil has energized, it closes the sealant contacts, which are also going to allow current to flow back to that coil. I could take my finger off the push button and this thing is going to stay sealed in over here. We have got a properly operational uh, start stop station over here. Press the stop, this thing is gonna interrupt all current, everything would go and shut off. This is the way that we do with the jog run selector switch. Your operator station simply would look like this. You'd have your stop push button, you'd have a start position uh, push button, and then you would go and have one of those selector switches that you can go and put into either two position. Really simple for people to go and activate. You know, there's no ambiguity off of these ones. The other method uses two push buttons, a start push button that's gonna seal in and a jog push button, and it also involves the use of a control relay. Control relays are usually going to be a little bit more expensive than a selector switch. Just, you know, so you know. It's a fancier one. You know, you're still buying a second component. Remember, we were buying a selector switch in the other one. Now we have to buy a second button off of this one. So it's not a, you know, it's simplified circuit in any sense of the word, nor is it a cheaper type of circuit. But it's an alternate one that revolves us not having to have a selector switch. We just do everything on the push button. We'll carry our power through up to all of our normally open contacts the way we've been doing so far. We now have line two that is gonna to go to a CR over here, which stands for control relay, as well as up to the coil. If we press the start, we'll start with that one. When we press start, we complete this circuit over here, which means that current is gonna flow over here to the CR. CR is going to energize. When CR energizes it, it is going to go and close its two sets of contacts, which means that its contact that it closes over here will divert power down to here, which is going to energize the coil over here. And because that coil has energized, it's going to close its ceiling contact, which means that I'm now going to go and have current that is going to go and be able to seal in the motor as well as be able to go and seal in the control relay. I can take my finger off the push button at that point, and I have got a complete path that is gonna be sealed in. You'll see that the CR contacts, those two over there, are both sealed in, and they're maintaining the control relay. The motor contact is sealed in and maintaining the motor relay there as well. If somebody presses stop, yes, absolutely, it's gonna drop out. You know, it's our only path for current into the circuit, so it's gonna go and drop the whole thing out. 
If somebody were to go and overload the motor and lose the motor itself, so if the motor coil were to go and shut down, the motor coil would go and open up over here, which would interrupt the path of current that is going up to the control relay. The control relay would deactivate as well. And so the whole system would go and shut down. Deactivate that. So it's a safe system. We still have got our overloads that are gonna be operational inside of it. It's just a slight bit more complex. That was this thing inside of a start mode uh, with a uh, just a regular, you know, start up and run. Let's take a look at this thing inside of a jog mode. Bring power back to all the normally open contacts once again. This time, what we're going to do is we're only going to go and press the jog. When we press the jog, current is going to be able to transfer through up to there, but it's only going to get up that far over there, and it's only going to get that far over there. Right? We don't complete that link through there. We can then go and energize the coil. If the coil, it's going to go and energize. It will close this over here, but you'll note that both of my control relays are open and they will stay open, which means that there's no way to seal this motor coil in. The motor coil itself is just going to you know, be held in as long as the button's on there. As soon as I remove that button, we drop all current to the coil. This is going to de-energize. This reopens up. We just go back to an at-rest state inside of our circuit. It is a slightly more difficult circuit to understand and draw. These things are usually going to be done off those octal, those eight pin relays that we've talked about before, uh, where we're going to have the coil and then we're going to go and have two of those form C contacts that are going to be on it. Um, <clears throat> and But that would all be placed inside of the control cabinet at that point. You, you're not going to see any of this on the outside. Usually there's room inside of a lot of our starter boxes that we can have one or two auxiliary relays in those as well. With anything that's going to be jogging, you do have to be careful about your motors and about your motor inrushes. If you continue to jog a motor, you're always going to go and have a repetitive inrush. And that's hard on all of my contactors, my starters, etc. This table, we saw this thing earlier in this module. I'm just pulling it up here again just because it's a good reference for what we're at over here. I just want you to take a look at the difference for a size, well, I don't know, we'll pick a size one over here. If I take a look at a size one, I see that it is good for 10 horsepower at 600 volts, pick the bottom one here. But I see that if I'm going to be doing jogging duty, I can only do five horsepower. And that's just because of that repetitive inrush current and having to make and break those large currents. All right, that is it for the jogging ones.